On this video, we're going to look at graphing rational functions, but we're going to look at them with a differing degrees. And what I mean by that is the degree of our numerator will be different than the degree of our denominator. We have a zeroth degree term up here because there's no variable at all, and a second degree term down here. And so these are the, kind of the four steps I've laid out in previous videos, and there's um, some exceptions and some things we need to add in here, as you'll see shortly. But for the most part, these steps work. And so I'm going to start with finding the zeros, a.k.a. the x-intercepts. And to do that, I'm going to set the numerator equal to zero and solve. Well, the numerator set it equal to zero. There's not really an x to solve for. So let's kind of shelve that conversation, and let's, let's kind of come back to this, okay? Because right now, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And then let's find our y-intercepts. And so the way we do that is substitute zero in for x and solve. In other words, let's find f of zero, okay? Because what we're really looking for with a y-intercept is zero comma something. And so if I do that, we have nine over zero squared minus nine, which is nine over negative nine, or in other words, negative one. That would mean that our y-intercept here is this point. Now for our vertical asymptotes, we're going to set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So to do that, I'm going to take my denominator, set it equal to zero and solve. So I could solve by factoring. Um, I could solve by roots. I'm going to add nine to each side. Then I'll take the square root of each side and get um, x equals positive or negative three. That means we actually have two vertical asymptotes in this case. So I have one at positive three and one at negative three. So there's our positive three, and here's our negative three. Okay, so we have two vertical asymptotes. It's going to create some, some unique stuff there. Now, let's look at our horizontal asymptotes, and I've given you this kind of acronym in the past, Bobo, Bosco, and Botno. So if the degree is bigger on bottom, y equals zero is the asymptote. Well, that's really what we have here. The degree is bigger on bottom. In our denominator, we're second degree. In our numerator, we're zeroth degree. So we are actually going to be this first situation right here, y equals zero is the asymptote, okay? Now, that means, let me label my verticals first, x equals three, x equals negative three, and then now we have y equals zero, which is kind of along the x-axis here. Now, here's why this is kind of important and interesting, is remember up here where we weren't really able to figure out uh, the x-intercepts, we said, well, there's not really any value of x that could uh, really at, at all in this equation. And so it was kind of giving us fits. But now that we come down here and we see, oh, we've got a horizontal asymptote at zero, this probably doesn't have any x-intercepts at all, okay? So I'm just going to say none. And now we're to this point, okay? I have one point right here. And so what we know about that point is our graph, because it's bound by the two vertical asymptotes, is it's going to do this number right here. Okay, And then sometimes you'll have this case, sometimes you'll have this case, sometimes you'll have this case. We don't really know what's going on in these other parts. And so all I like to do in this situation is I like to pick a point over here and substitute it in. And, and if I get a positive number, we're up here. If I get a negative number, we're down here. Same thing over here. I might substitute in like a, like a 4. If we get a positive number, we're up here. If we get a negative number, we're down here. And so if I do that, and I'm kind of running out of space, but let's just do like f of negative 4. Let's pick a point over here to the left of our vertical asymptote. That would give us 9 over negative 4 squared minus 9. That's going to give us 9 over 16 minus 9 is 7. Oh, we got a positive number. So that means the ordered pair negative 4 and 9 sevenths is on our graph. That would be, let's see, negative 4, 9, 7, probably somewhere around there. That means our graph is going to look like this. And then, just to save us time, honestly, you could put in a, a positive 4, but you're going to get the same thing over here. So, not a super exact process, but it gives us a good idea of what our rational function will look like there.